As demand increases, conventional oil has become more expensive, and oil production appears to have reached its peak. Because of this, and other factors such as national security, government and industry have begun looking to reserves of unconventional oil to energize the world's population. These sources of unconventional oil, such as oil sands and shale oil, are varied and occur in areas both domestically and outside of the U.S. What makes these unconventional sources of oil? Essentially, the oil that can be extracted was not geologically refined by Mother Nature as conventional oil was. It was formed from organic debris, but heat and pressure were never great enough to transform it into conventional oil. This oil is not a liquid in the ground that can be easily pumped out. Unconventional oil requires a more complex and more expensive extraction and refining process until it would be recognized as the same crude oil. Some might wonder why there is interest in unconventional oil, rather than focusing on alternative forms of energy such as solar or wind power. It's an issue of supply and demand. The population demands a cheap energy source to keep the economy going, yet they also demand environmental sustainability. So how do you supply the cheap energy that the population demands in an environmentally sustainable way? Right now, we can't. Government and industry see unconventional oil as a stepping stone to our society becoming less dependent on foreign fossil fuels and eventually independent of fossil fuels completely. Let's start by defining some of the different types of unconventional oil. Oil sands, also known as tar sands, are a mixture of sand, clay, water, and a heavy black substance called bitumen. Bitumen is usually used as a sealant or paving material. In fact, the word mummy supposedly comes from the term because bitumen was used by the ancient Egyptians in their process of mummification. However, the bitumen, which makes up about 10% of the oil sands mixture, also can be extracted from the sand and refined into oil. There are two types of extraction processes open pit mining and in situ or on-site extraction. In open pit mining, huge shovels dig up and load tar sand into enormous trucks which will carry the tar sand to an extraction plant. At the plant, a hot water treatment separates the bitumen from the sand. About 75% of the total bitumen can be extracted. After, the sand is returned to the mine. The bitumen must then be upgraded to crude oil, which involves additional heating and the removal of certain hydrocarbons before it can be refined to diesel or gasoline. About two tons of oil sand produces one barrel of oil. Since only 20% of oil sands are shallow enough to be mined, in situ methods involving the heating and removal of bitumen on site are used. The most common method, steam assisted gravity drainage, involves pumping steam at a temperature of 580 degrees Fahrenheit, several hundred meters underground. The steam melts the bitumen, which can then be pumped out. This method requires huge amounts of both water and energy. Between two and four barrels of water are used to produce one barrel of oil, while the amount of energy used in the process consumes one barrel of oil for every three barrels that is extracted. After the oil processing, water that cannot be recycled back into the treatment process is pumped into huge ponds of wastewater. These are known as tailings ponds and they hold water that is too contaminated with mercury and other toxins, as well as the actual tailings, fine particles of clay that are suspended in the water. These particles take a long time to settle out, and thus must be kept in the ponds until all the sand and clay has settled to the bottom, and the water can be used again for processing. It is estimated that there are over 2 trillion barrels of oil in the form of oil sands. The largest deposits are found in Alberta, Canada, and Venezuela. Within the U.S., there is estimated to be 60 to 80 billion barrels, 11 billion of which would be commercially recoverable. The deposits are mainly in Utah and California. If the U.S. government takes action, it is conceivable that there could be a full-fledged domestic oil sands industry by 2035. Right now, Canada has the only large-scale commercial oil sands industry. Canada produces 1 million barrels each day from the oil sands. These sands, which cover an area about the size of the state of Florida, make up 40% of the country's total oil production, and the percentage is expected to increase. Currently, tens of billions of dollars are being invested in the Alberta oil sands by industry giants such as Shell, ConocoPhillips, Chevron, and ExxonMobil. Oil shale is a sedimentary rock that contains a substance similar to bitumen known as kerogen. Oil shale has been used as a fuel since prehistoric times, and is known as the rock that burns, since it can catch fire easily. Like oil sands, the oil shell can be heated to extract the kerogen, which can then be refined into crude oil. 
One ton of oil shell can produce anywhere from 10 to 60 gallons of oil, depending on the concentration of kerogen. Oil shale is extracted through underground or surface mining. The shale is transported to a facility for a heating process, known as retorting, where the shale expands and the kerogen is released. The spent shale is used for road fill, or can be returned to the mined areas. However, spent shale must be handled carefully because it contains toxins which rain will leach. In addition to the mining process, Shell is currently developing an in situ process which involves heating the shale using electric heaters inserted into deep vertical holes in the rock. The rock would then be heated for two to three years until it reached 650 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the oil would separate from the shale and be pumped out of collection wells. The technology currently relies on the idea of a freeze wall which is a refrigerated liquid that would be pumped around the extraction area and prevent the oil and other toxins from leaking into the groundwater. The U.S. Department of Energy considers the idea promising, but the process and the freeze wall technology remain unproven at a commercial scale. Like tar sands, oil shale extraction requires several barrels of water for one barrel of oil and uses about one barrel of oil in energy use for every three barrels of oil produced. Three countries, Estonia, Brazil, and China, already produce oil from oil shale and have been for decades. But the United States has 70% of the world's oil shale reserves. The largest deposits of oil shale are found in what is known as the Green River Formation, which covers parts of Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. This formation contains approximately 1.2 to 1.8 trillion barrels of oil. Most scientists estimate about 800 billion recoverable barrels. This amount would meet the energy needs of the U.S. for over 400 years, at America's current consumption rate of 20 million barrels per day. Currently, Shell has funded some experimental oil shale production operations in parts of Utah, and, if successful, the global oil shale market is expected to be worth $12 billion by 2015. While unconventional oil production would alleviate some economic and national security issues, its production causes more environmental damage than that of conventional oil. More land is disturbed and more pollutants and contaminants are released into the air and water supplies. Greenhouse gas emissions are 15 to 40 percent higher for oil sands than conventional oil, and about 200 percent higher for oil shale. The oil industry's ecological footprint would also increase because of the construction of facilities, roads, pipelines, utilities, and expected population growth around a production area. Most land that contains oil sands or oil shale is in or adjacent to conservation, wilderness, or scenic areas. Open pit mining dramatically alters the plant animal life of the immediate area and its surroundings. Canada's boreal forest, which covers 1.4 billion acres, is one of the largest still intact ecosystems on the planet. Oil sand production destroys huge areas of boreal forest, although oil companies insist that it is possible for land reclamation after mining. Industry executives maintain that land reclamation recreates wetlands and the natural forest dynamic, but this has yet to be proven. Another concern is the excessive water use the production plants require in already dry areas. For example, the Colorado River supplies water for virtually all of the Southwest, and additional water usage in Colorado could deplete supply for high population areas like Los Angeles. Leakage or runoff from tailings ponds or in situ processes could cause contamination of the water supply of rivers and groundwater. In Alberta, the oil sands border the Athabasca River, and risk of contamination is high. In fact, many indigenous communities who live downstream of the oil sands plants report higher levels of cancer as well as increased levels of metal in their air, water, and soil. Lastly, greenhouse gases and environmental toxins such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrous oxides are released into the air through exposure and heating processes. Because of this, carbon capture and storage technologies are being researched, although some environmentalists say that this technology could never actually work effectively. In areas of oil shale production, it is likely that there would be increased regional haze due to dust and additional water would be necessary to reduce this problem. Because of oil sand production, Canada will not meet its Kyoto emissions reduction levels. Many other countries and environmental organizations believe that relying on unconventional oil may not help the global climate problem, while still others believe it is one more step towards improved national security and alternative energy use.